All right, whenever you are ready, Doug. And welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. We're so glad you've chosen to worship with us today. This is a sacred time as we gather in community to open our hearts to God. I invite you to light a candle wherever you are, as our candles are lit here in our sanctuary, to remind us of God's presence with us and to set aside this as a time of worship for you. Our service will be in voice and text. Music will be on the media viewer, so be sure you have media turned on. There will be a link in nearby chat if you want to view the video in your own browser. I'm going to start our gathering music and run the rest of the announcements underneath. I do love that song. Worship is a time when we as a community join
So this time is the essence of what we do here together. If you have a prayer that you wish to lift to God and have supported by the energy of those gathered here, type it in your by chat at this time. And as people share their prayers in text, please read them prayerfully and hold this space as sacred and safe to open our hearts to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I'll start with a prayer for my internet that it holds during today. As you might have noticed, it just cut out on me briefly. It's been that way for a couple of weeks. So, oh God, who walks us through difficult technology, hear our prayers. Joyous prayers for those in places of war. Amen. We pray that peace may prevail in all places where there is war or other conflict. And that peace starts with peace in the hearts. So, O oh God of peace, hear our prayers. Prayers for peace and peacemakers, all the ones who work unseen for bringing peace. That tags on very well for that. Amen. Amen. The prayers for all we hold dear. Laura working with a new health care aid, but hanging in there. Marie, minor surgery coming up for Johnny Fenn, Butterfly, Monica, V, and all others who are in our hearts but who are not here. That will include traveling mercies for our uh, founding pastor, Pastor Jerome, who is, I believe, somewhere in Alaska driving around in an RV at this time. So traveling mercies for him. God of grace, hear our prayers. Prayers for First UCC and SL for the great work done and always in progress. Thank you, Cleo. We appreciate that. Those prayers are always, always welcome. Traveling with Joyous, Traveling Mercies for Julia and Ken and all who travel. Yes, we're now heading into the summer. So with the summer upon us, people will be traveling a lot. So Traveling Mercies for all of them. Oh, our traveling God who goes with us everywhere. Here are our prayers. With Lily, preparing. So now we are playing the waiting game, waiting for insurance to pre-authorize a PET scan. Then we will wait some more to see a plastic surgeon, and then we'll wait again for the surgery we really need to remove a cancerous sore. Oh, that's so hard. So we really don't want to be waiting, but the process has stalled before it's even gotten started. Oh, that's so hard. Waiting for that treatment that you know you need, and for all of the bureaucratic paperwork to go through, it's really, really hard. So we pray that the process goes as quickly as it can. Um, pray for wisdom in all those who are treating you and for some peace in your heart in this time of waiting. O oh God of grace, hear our prayer. Uh, and it's even harder when you don't like the doctor, right? Oh, you do like him. That's what she said. You do. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Have you seen the surgeon yet? Do you like the surgeon? It's not always the same person. Ah, okay, good. Cleo prayers for Cleo's health. She had Cleo had some downs, but got better and wants to keep healthy. 
being sick put Cleo in a very depressed place. Oh, it's really hard. It really, it's, there's such a, a connection between our mental state and our physical state. It's really all about the same thing. So yes, hugs and prayers for, for your health and your state of mind, mind, body, and spirit. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Ah, Cleo needs to help the elders. Mm, yes. Yes, so, and caregivers. Caregivers often get sick because it takes a great toll. So take care of yourself as you take care of others. I also would ask for prayers for me as I begin begin a new job. Um, so that's uh, always something that we need prayers we need prayers for. God of grace here, a prayer, prayers for people who feel alone. Yes, for all those who are lonely, even in a crowd, and those who are really isolated from others and need the support. Uh, may they feel God's presence with them, even in their solitude. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Those voiced here today, those spoken only in the depths of our hearts, those for which we have no words, we lift them all to you, O Lord. With faith in your boundless love and grace. Did I get them all, Doug? Then all I can say is amen. The first Sunday after Pentecost is assigned as Trinity Sunday in the church calendar. 
so we get to talk about the Trinity. Yay! No, really. Yay! Interestingly, in art, the Trinity has often been associated with a story from the Hebrew Bible, the story of the three visitors to Abraham and Sarah. Icons of the Trinity are based on this story, like the famous one from the 15th century um, by uh, artist Andrei Rublev. Pull it up now so that you can see that. So first, we'll hear that story. Note that the scene is set up by a narrator as Yahweh, the Lord, of, the Lord God, appearing to Abraham. But what Abraham saw was three people, three travelers, literally three men, um, in most translations. As this story has been interpreted over time, these three have sometimes been seen as angels and perhaps something more. Abraham seems to recognize them as something more since he bows low and regards them with a kind of reverence. He also invites them to a meal. After that story, we will hear the epistle reading from today's lectionary. It comes, it's the very last piece, the close of Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. So let us listen to God speaking through the words of Genesis 18, verses 1 through 14, and 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. I'm sorry, just a sec. Yahweh appeared to Abraham by the oak grove at Mamre, while Abraham sat at the entrance to his tent in the heart of the heat of the day. Looking up, Abraham saw three travelers standing nearby. When he saw them, Abraham ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, If I have found favor in your eyes, Please do not pass by our tent. Let some water be brought that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves beneath this tree. As you come to your faithful one, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourselves. Afterwards, you may go on your way. Very well, they replied. Do as you have said. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick! Take a bushel of, bushel of fine flour and knead it into loaves of bread. Abraham then ran to the herd, selected a choice and tender calf, and sent a worker hurrying to prepare it. Then Abraham took cheese and milk and the calf which had been prepared and placed it before the travelers. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. Where is Sarah? they asked. There, in the tent, Abraham replied. One of them said, I will surely to return to you this time next year, and Sarah will then have a child. Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent and behind him. Now Sarah and Abraham were old, well on in years, and Sarah no longer had her periods. So Sarah laughed to himself and said, Now that I am so old and my husband even older, is pleasure to come my way again? Yahweh said to Abraham, Why does Sarah laugh and say, Will I really deliver a child at my age? Is anything too extraordinary for God to do? And a reading from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thanks be to God indeed. Thank you, Joyous, and thank you, Doug. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Can I just say, I love the Trinity. Of all thing, the things that surprised me as I went through seminary, this is perhaps the greatest. Before seminary, I had heard of the Trinity. You know, my church growing up dutifully sang the doxology every service. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we also sang the Gloria Patri. You know, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Good New England-style congregationalists that we were, we didn't talk about the Holy Ghost, so we never got that part. When it came time to study this church doctrine, it still seemed alien to me. But I knew I had to understand it, so I went searching and fell in love. Now the three in one is one of the few church doctrines that resonates with me. Uh, maybe the only one. Good thing I'm in the United Church of Christ. Remember, the word Trinity isn't used in the Bible. That was coined in the third century of the Common Era, and the doctrine itself wasn't accepted as a doctrine of the church until the fourth century. The church has been arguing about what it means ever since. Major church battles have been fought over the Trinity. It was one of the reasons behind the Great Schism, separating the Western Church in Rome from the Eastern Orthodox Church. They couldn't agree on whether the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father or proceeded from the Father and the Son together. Really. I mean, really, folks. This is the hill you want to die on. The Trinity is a metaphor. We made it up. And, you know, I don't love the Trinity as a church doctrine. I love it as a metaphor that describes the indescribable, the multifaceted, diverse and dynamic human experiences of and relationship with the divine. Three is a sacred number in many cultures and traditions, used as a convention to symbolize the many and the diverse that can't simply be numbered as one or two. You know, one is solitary, alone. One isn't in relationship with anyone or anything else. Two can be in relationship, but that may be in opposition to each other, back and forth, either this or that, like a tennis match or the original video game Pong, where you use these two squares of light to hit a dot from one side of the set to the other. Okay, I'm dating myself. Or two can be a closed relationship that excludes all others. Have you ever been an uncomfortable third with two others who really didn't want you along? But three, for a true three, there must be a flow between them. Sociologists say that three is the beginning of social life. With three, the flow becomes not just a back and forth, but a dance. North American theologian Sandra Schneider bemoans the shrinking of our religious imagination that has reduced the Trinity to, quote, an old man, a young man, and a bird. When, as Father Richard Rohr says, God isn't just a dancer, God is the dance itself. We 
this is not some new or new agey idea. The ancient Greek Christian fathers described the Trinity as a dance in the round, a circle dance. Kind of like this one. does look like fun. I love how the dance goes, you know, when the partners continually switch. You know, the dancers never know exact, exactly who they're going to be dancing with. And my experience of the divine dance is kind of like that. But the dance of the Trinity isn't a closed circle. We are invited to participate. So let's look at that 15th century ruble of icon again. You may have to cam in to see it better. The faces are all the same, but they wear different clothes to represent their diversity. And they're seated around a table, their heads inclined toward each, toward each other. Not three isolated individuals, but a community gathered for a meal together. Richard Rohr points us to the little rectangle in front of the table. Do you see it? Scholars have discovered traces of glue in that rectangle. And they believe that glue once held a small mirror to the face of the icon. Whoever gazed on the original icon would see themselves seated at the table too, included in the circle, part of that divine company, worthy, welcome. What a difference from the original story of the visitation of Abraham, where he served the visitors food but stayed off to the side under a tree. 
This is not a closed circle. There is always room for one more at the table. And each of us is invited to join them. Artist Kelly Lattimore uh, communicates that same idea a little differently in this contemporary version of that icon modeled on the ruble. There is more diversity in the figures than just the clothing. And they don't just look at each other. The, the figure on the right looks directly out at the viewer. And while the three figures hold hands to show their connection, their relationship, the figures on the sides each hold one hand open, ready to grasp the hand of any others who wish to join the circle. Viewed this way, this ancient relic of a church doctrine feels remarkably modern and relevant. I have to wonder if the patriarchal church explanations of the Trinity have been deliberately kept overly complicated and mysterious to avoid the ramifications of the radical inclusiveness inherent in the doctrine itself. Oh, you don't need to try to understand it. It's just a mystery. Convenient for the patriarchy, don't you think? And I can't think of a better way to start June, which in the U.S. is Pride Month, than by reclaiming ancient Christian doctrine that celebrates diversity and extravagant welcome. And dancing. Let's not forget dancing. Amen. I want to dance to this next song and dance yourself right over to the kitchen to get the communion elements if you forgot to bring them earlier. Let our hearts not be hearted To those living on the margins There is room at the table For everyone This is where it all begins This is how we gather in There is room at the table For everyone Everyone, let us sing the new world. 
Abraham may have stood under a tree, and Sarah stayed in the tent, laughing. But we are invited to join the divine at the communion table, to share a holy meal with God, known in many ways. This table is open to all. And I invite you to hold the elements you have gathered, the bread and cup, and feel their weight in your hand. They are real and tangible. As God's love is real and tangible and experienced in many ways. As some of us may have bread, others cookies or crackers, tortillas or cake, some may have wine, others juice or water or soda. And yet as we are gathered here to eat together, they all represent God's love for each of us. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, bless this bread and cup. May they be vibrant with your presence, nourishing what is deepest in us. And as we take these elements into our bodies, may we remember that Christ taught us that divinity is also in each of us. Amen. And so we remember a time in an upper room long ago when Jesus took the bread on the table for the meal, blessed it, and broke it, and shared it, saying, This is my body given for you. Take, eat, and remember me. And in the same way, he took a cup of wine, the juice of the vine, and shared it, saying, Drink, and as often as you drink, remember me. I invite you to close your eyes if you are comfortable doing so, and imagine yourself at a round table with others. This food is passed from hand to hand. And then take the bread. Know that this is the bread of life, the body of Christ given for you. Take, eat, and remember. Now, Take the cup of blessing, whatever you have gathered to drink, and remember. Let us pray. We give thanks, O oh God, for the nourishment provided body and soul at this table. May it inspire us to offer that nourishment in your name to those who need it. Amen. Our worship is over. Our ministry to the world is just beginning. The world is waiting. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I hope you will dance to this last song, not just with your avatar, though that's good too, but wherever you are in real life, if you can't if you can, dance. If you can't get up, dance with one hand or with a finger. Dance with your eyebrows. But I hope you will dance.
Peace. Thank you for coming.